What's up, people? I hope you're doing great. Uh, here we are, Chapter 4, Welcome, Lesson 4-1, uh, coming at us today. Got a lot of new... I'm going to trip on this chord here, folks. You're going to laugh. It's, it's going to happen. A lot of new words. Listen up. Here we go. Well, we are on page 212. 212. 212. 212, people. How does a scatter plot show the relationship word. between paired data? Another new Think word. about this question during the lesson. We will. Luciana analyzes the data collected to figure out how long after posting a blog, her new homepage received its maximum number of new views. Okay. Her data are presented in the table. How can she determine whether there is a relationship between the time after posting and the number of new views? Can you see a pattern between the time after posting and the number of new views? What do you guys think? Draw a scatter plot. A scatter plot is a graph in the coordinate plane that shows the relationship between two sets of data. Okay. What does Luciana have to figure out before she can start constructing the scatter plot? Okay. So let's just talk about a couple things real quick. So first off, we have this thing we call a scatter plot. Folks, a scatter plot is just a bunch of dots, right, located here. Again, we're in quadrant one. We don't really care about the other three quadrants. Good to go. When we talk about paired data, right, well, the paired data, guys, that's our X variable data and our Y variable data, right? Mr. Noel uses this fancy word. He'll call it bivariate data. Yeah. Okay? So our paired data we get, guys, from right here, time after posting and number of new views. Is that really just an X value and Y value? It is. They're it's just like a coordinate point. Yeah. They're, wow. Guys, every scatter plot is going to have dots. Those dots literally just represent these two numbers here. So we have a table. We're going to make an ordered pair. We're going to put it on a graph. Okay? So we've all done that before. We just got a lot of new stuff first. All right, but before we can make a, a graph, guys, what do we need to do? Label. Oh, yeah, we have to do labeling. We have to figure out what we're going to count by on both our X and our Y axis. Now, again, some of the examples in the book are a little bit, little bit dumb, a little bit confusing. All right, but, you know, we just want to look at our numbers and say, hey, what's the lowest number? What's the highest number? Well, guys, our, our axis, right, our X axis has to include those numbers. Same thing for our Y axis. We've got to include all of these numbers here. We can debate about, okay, should we count by fives or tens or twenties? Okay, but that's the first thing I need to do, right, is label my axes and then figure out what are we going to count by. So let's see what the book does. Let's see. Luciana must look at the data values to determine the scales for the nice X job, and Mr. Y Freaky. axes. She must yes. decide which variable in the paired data goes on the X axis and which goes on the Y axis. Y depends on X. The X axis is the variable that is controlled the time after posting. Always. Because the maximum value of x in the data is 7 and the coordinate grid is 10 by 10, a scale of one grid line equals one hour yep. makes sense for this data. Count by ones. The y-axis is the variable that cannot be controlled, the number of new views. Each grid line equals some number of new views. What value would make the most useful scale for Y? So again, folks, we so got to go from uh, 25 all the way up to, I think, 500. So, like, should each square be worth 10, 50, 100, or 500? What do you guys want me to choose? Somebody shout out a number. 500. 500. Oh, but we get to hear the fun noise. 10. 10? No, again, too big, way too small, right? If we counted, look, we need to get all the way up to 500, guys. We should pick, you want to pick the smallest, biggest number, right, if that makes any sense. How about 50? That's a good one. Because the maximum value of Y in the data is 500. Yep. And the grid should have counted by like ones. 10. 50 is the scale value that makes the most sense. That'd be a lot. That'd Just be a lot. like before. Luciana labels every other line. Okay. Luciana is ready for the next step to plot the yep. ordered pairs. Now on we the can graph. finally get to put these she on the graph. She begins with the first blog post Boom. and plots two, X, three, 
She does the same for the remaining data. Well, that's annoying. How do you determine the meaning of a data point on a scatter plot? How do you determine the Find meaning? Find the location oh. of the data point. The coordinates are time after posting and number of yep. views. For example, 3200 means that three hours after a particular post, there were 200 new views. Luciana can now use a scatter plot to determine whether there is a relationship between the two data sets. Okay. All right. So, guys, just real quickly. Oh, oh. oh that's okay. There we go. So, each one of these dots, right, all it means, because eventually they're going to say, hey, what does this dot down here mean? And you just have to use that ordered pair with your X and your Y um, variables. To say, hey, after six hours, we had 50 views, right? That's what we have to do. Okay, now we can go to the try. -in. Look, like magic, I want to make it appear. Awesome. All right. Again, I've got a table over here. We've got age and number of entries. Uh, it says, Luciana collects data about the ages and subscribers who enter the contest giveaway. The point that represents the data in the fourth column has these coordinates. So we need to go to the fourth column. You guys even know what rows and columns are? If not, we're going to get really good at them because we're going to see a lot of it this way. Anyway, rows. Rows go across, left to right. Columns go up and down. So the fourth column, one, two, three. That is this one right here. Mm -hmm. All right, has the coordinates. Well, again, folks, you got to remember, anytime we see a unit of measure that involves time, so years, months, days, hours, minutes, seconds, any of those, input. that will be our input or our independent variable, also known as the X variable. So I see age and years. I know, hey, that's our input variable, our X variable. Number of entries is the output or the Y variable. So the fourth column has the ordered pair what, guys? It's right here. We make an ordered pair out of that data? Yeah, we can. It should be 13, comma, 9. Okay. How many points would be on this scatter plot? Well, remember, each one of our data points turns into a dot on the scatter plot. So, how many ordered pairs can we make from that table? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Six, that's right. Six, guys. So we would have a graph. You're really good at I know, and it would have six dots on it. Okay, and that's it. And then we're going to analyze it. And we're going to figure out, hey, is there a pattern? Is there not a pattern? Like, what's really going on? All right. Um, okay, example two. It's a good one. You're in for, you're in for a treat here. Rochelle asked 10 friends how many hours of sleep they got the night before a math test yeah. and then matched that data with their scores. She plotted her data in the graph below. Did students who slept more get higher test scores? What do you think? Okay. So, look, they've already plotted this scatter plot for us. Okay? So now we're going to talk about characteristics of a scatter plot. Okay? And sometimes our scatter plots, guys, can have these characteristics. It doesn't mean they're going to have all of them. doesn't mean they're going to have any of them. Okay? But they could have these things we call clusters, gaps, and outliers. Well, what is each one of those? Let's pick my favorite one first, outliers. Right? All right. Mm. So an outlier, guys, is just a data point. Kind of all by its lonesome. It's not anywhere near... It's not anywhere close to any of the other any other points around, right? It means something weird was going on that caused this. Okay, clusters. Probably my next favorite. Clusters are when we've got a whole bunch of data all clustered or really close together. Okay, easy to note. Hey, we have a cluster here. I have an outlier here. What is a gap? I wonder. I don't know. Oh, good thing they tell us. Uh, that's an area on our graph that contains no data. Now, I would argue that this is not really the, uh, 
the gap that we're looking for, right? Because, look, the gap that I would go for is, look, at, the, at minimum, we've got kids that sleep for five hours, right? I, don't, I have a gap here between zero hours and five hours because I don't have any dots anywhere in this section. So when we talk about gaps, this is what we're after, okay? This, I would argue, look, we have... Look, that means we, we shouldn't have any dots that sleep seven hours, but I got, I got some already, okay? So when we talk about gaps, we're looking for like the holes, um, the parts of our scatter plot that don't have any data, okay? All right. Um, talk about positive association. Oh, whoa, yeah. Positive, negative, none. <sighs> Lots of new words, guys. Association. Okay, Mr. Knoll will also say correlation. Um, there's some other ones in there too that we'll use. But for now, positive association. If, do we all know what positive slope is? I hope we know what positive slope I is, I sure Mr. hope Knoll. so. Okay, so guys, if I draw a positive slope line right here on this graph, there it goes. What's happening to my x, um, my x variable? My x numbers are getting bigger. What's happening to the y variable as we move along this line? Well, the y variables are also getting bigger. So they're increasing, okay? So if we see this, right, if all of my dots kind of go in that upward motion, we call that a positive association, okay? And that just means, guys, as our x values increase, so do my y, my y values, if I can talk right, okay? What about just the opposite? So guys, what if we had, what if we had negative slope, right? Now my line's going downhill. Well, look, this is still increasing. My x values still increase, but now the exact opposite happens with my y values. Now my y values are decreasing. Okay. So when our dots kind of go in this general direction, they're going downhill. We say that that's negative association. Okay. And again, as the x values increase, the y values now decrease. Um, yes, we would say this scatter plot has positive association because look, all of our dots appear to be going in this upward, right? Trend. Trend. You will hear the word trend a lot. Okay. Mr. Noll, anything else you want me to yap about? No. Okay. Positive, negative, and none. That's right. Here we go, example three. We get a bonus video? No. Oh, darn the bad luck. Avery is the middle school basketball statistician. Yes. She tracks the number of minutes a player plays and the number of fouls the player makes. Okay. Her data are shown in the scatter plot. Is there an association between the number of minutes played and the number of fouls made? Okay. So, again, we're just trying to figure out is there a pattern or an association to the data that we see in the scatter plot here. So we're going to look really closely at this scatter plot. Go ahead, look closely at it. Okay. Do the dots kind of form a pattern being like, hey, do all of my dots kind of go uphill? Maybe do all of my dots go downhill? Or do I just have dots everywhere? Oh, somebody said it. Dots everywhere. Yes. Guys, we have dots everywhere. That means no association, right? There is no pattern, okay? So yeah, you could you could be Mr. Noel be very specific and say, hey, the y values aren't increasing or decreasing as the x values increase because we just got them everywhere. All right. Hopefully, we'll get to figure out one of these. Aha. Avery also does some more tracking. She tracks the number of minutes a player plays and the number of points they score. Right then. Uh, she plots them all. Here it is. Describe the association between the two data sets. Okay. So what do you guys think? Got some dots. They kind of look like they're going up in this general direction. So guys, if you if you if it helps you, now look. Would you, would you guys agree that those dots are all kind of going upwards like that? I would. Yep, I would too. So does this have association? Sure does, right? That line has positive slope, so we say this is a positive association or a positive trend. So what does that mean? 
Well, that means as these x values increase, right? As these x numbers, look, 4, 8, 12, 16, increasing. What happens to the point scored? Those increase as well, okay? So when x's increase, y's increase. That's positive association, right? So there we go. We described it. Beautiful. Uh, we got anything else? No, no, that's example three. That's everybody. example three. Okay. All right, gang. Hey, we're going to be in our workbook here, page probably, I don't know, 214? 214. 214. Uh, for our key concepts. I'll meet you there in three seconds. Go.